Section 43 of Christmas and Christmas Lore. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Christmas and Christmas Lore by Thomas G. Crippen. Christmas Boxes. In taking leave of Christmas gifts, we naturally think of the gifts to children at the Roman Sigillaria and of the strenae offered to the emperor or exchanged between private citizens on the calends of january men gave sweet things that the year might be full of sweetness lamps that it might be full of light coin that wealth might flow in a main evidently a sort of sympathetic magic to ensure a lucky new year it is easy to see how a new year's custom might be transferred to christmas but not so easy to understand why the seasonable gift should be expected on the day following the feast or why that day should be called boxing day indeed there is no man living who certainly knows though many have guessed the origin and primary meaning of boxing day and christmas box most folklorists associate the words with the earthen savings box which had to be broken to release its hoard it is well known that servants and apprentices especially london apprentices used such boxes to collect those christmas gifts which they deemed their legitimate perquisites naturally the box would be broken only when fully charged i e when christmas day was passed an essayist writing in sixteen twenty one says of a covetous man as an apprentice's box of earth apt he is to take all but to restore none till he be broken another under date sixteen forty two makes the same comparison phrasing it thus like the christmas earthen boxes of apprentices whither alludes to the earthen box in that merry song of his which has furnished so many seasonable proverbs but he seems rather to be thinking of savings accumulated in the past and now made available to prepare for the feast our kitchen boy has broke his box and to the dealing of the ox our honest neighbors come by flocks because they will be merry a hundred years later henry carey introduced the same idea in his delightfully humorous ballad of sally in our alley he makes his london prentice say o oh, christmas time is drawing near and then i shall have money i'll save it up and box and all i'll give it to my honey the earthen box for savings is still to be found in holland where it is commonly made in the shape of a pig and is called the feast pig to break it unseasonably is unlucky almost a crime according to the ethics of the nursery another explanation of the familiar phrase makes it refer to the church alms box the contents of which were not dispensed until the day after christmas which was therefore called boxing day others say that the words have nothing to do with the box of any kind that they came hither with the crusaders and are nothing else but the arabic bakshish i e a gratuity there is not much of history to support this view of the matter but one might almost be tempted to adopt it in view of the fact that of old and indeed not so very long since every person who had or was supposed to have rendered any service to another during the year looked for bakshish at christmas indeed regarded it as a right husk says every householder was duly waited upon by the postman the lamplighter the waits the turncock the parish beadle the dustman the parish watchman and others in london the parish beadles who usually exercised the function of town criers were accustomed about christmas time to distribute a list of the parish officers for the year and other information with an appeal to public generosity in doggerel rhyme more or less seasonable specimens of such bellman's verses are known of date seventeen thirty five and one firm raynell's of piccadilly afterwards of little pulteney street continued to produce them for at least a hundred thirty years husk tells us that a heavy blow and great discouragement to the custom of christmas boxing among tradesmen has been given by the growing practice of keeping the shops closed on boxing day no one unless it were mr scrooge before his conversion would grudge a christmas box to the postman the lamplighter or the dustman 
but it is a different matter when servants claim backsheesh from tradesmen who supply their masters or clerks and managers of retail traders expect presents from the wholesale dealers be that as it may the best kind of christmas box that which is most in accord with the genius of the season is one recommended as long ago as the days of nehemiah go your way eat of the fat and drink of the sweet and send portions to those for whom nothing is provided before finally dismissing the topic of christmas gifts it may be well to mention the publication of seasonable gift books which for a century and a half have been growing year by year more and more luxurious they were originally designed for children and were of a very simple character the earliest examples known are those issued by john newbury the famous bookseller of st paul's churchyard in seventeen sixty five one of which is the history of goody two-shoes ascribed on what seems to be satisfactory evidence to oliver goldsmith end of section forty three